Yo, what's up everyone? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a top five decks of the meta with the new ban list. What is number two, three, and four, or five after Pendulum? Let's figure out. Let's go. the channel don't forget to smash the subscribe button don't forget to check out the beautiful Triff gaming playmats at triffgaming.com get your custom playmats now sign up for the pendulum training membership down below and let's go straight into the video every new format everyone wonders what is the top five decks of the meta so you guys can prepare for the meta even though the video says top five decks of the meta i'm going to change it up for you guys right now to prepare even better and that is top 10 decks of the meta just so you guys could prepare better for yourselves to know how to side deck what to prepare for and build your deck for to destroy so top 10 decks of the meta let's get it number 10 is going to be zodiac all right zodiac is surprisingly actually pretty good it does what sub terror and alter guys do but it's a recurring engine that's pretty good you're not going to play zodiac before you're basically going to play Dryden Control with Zodiac Combo and Avarice easily putting the cards back. Avarice makes Zodiacs pretty damn good as well. And you play 20 traps in the deck and hand traps. So 20 to 25 staple cards and just Zodiac cards. It's actually a pretty damn good deck. And I'm a big fan of it. I've always loved Zodiac so much. It's the deck I played before Pendulums. Uh, well, I played... Yeah, Pendulum Zodiac is the best deck of all time. I love it. Anyways... We're going to go on to number 9, and that is Mermails. I think Mermails with Deep Sea Diva at 3, and especially with the new support coming out, eventually to, uh, to search Diva, the deck's going to be damn good, and it's going to be a problem for all decks. On my Patreon, I just posted a video, or well, I will be posting a video of Patreon of, on my Patreon of Mermail versus Pendulums with the new support in Eternity Code, or whatever that set's called, and it's a pretty damn good deck. Number 8, I'm going to put Subterror. Now, a lot of people think Subterror is trash. I... Think sub tier is not that bad, only because it's a it's a one card engine and a bunch of trap cards, which I like decks like that. And I think Zodiac and sub tier are pretty close. But I decided to put sub tier above, just because uh, there's a lot of uncertainty around Zodiac and a lot of uncertainty around Mermails. But both Mermail and Zodiac could easily be better than sub tier. Uh, number seven, Mech Invoked. Now Mech Invoked been a deck that's been around for a long time. I'm not putting this deck in the top five because. Any deck that auto loses going first is just a bad deck. That's why Grand Madru and Mystic Mind, I think both Grand Madru going is just garbage going first. I'm not even putting that in the top 10. And Mystic Mind Burn is just a garbage deck, period. I'm not putting that anywhere in here. And I also thought about putting Magical Muskets in here, by the way, but I thought that just missed the top 10. But Mech Invoked, number 7. It, it's tough to deal with going second, but going first is a free, so they're not getting past 7 for me. Number 6, this card could easily also be number 5. This deck could also easily be number 5. That is Altergeist. I think Altergeist is a, is a decent deck. Uh, but the deck I chose for number 5, I think is just better overall. Altergeist, any deck that I just... And basically, the way this meta is, and I think Konami did this on purpose, the top like 7 decks are, are pretty... The top 2nd sec, to 7th are pretty similar in power. I don't think there's that much change. You can go anywhere from 2 to 7. Number 1 is obvious, what the best deck on the planet and of all time is. And just nothing comes close to it, and that's not me even joking especially with Droll not being around anymore. Because if you look at every deck I just named, Droll and Lockbird is useless against. Uh, the deck that I'm about to say, Droll and Lockbird is useless against. Droll and Lockbird is useless against literally every matchup of this format, every deck this format, with the exception of Pendulums. So wh why would anyone that thinks... People don't even put Pendulum in the top five because they're absolute morons. So Droll will not be seen play anymore. So uh, any, that's why Pendulum is. But anyway, let's go, go on to number uh, five, which is Rocket. I made Rocket Dragon Link number 5 over Altergeist simply because it, it's a damn good deck. It's a good deck. It could do a lot of stuff. Shen Ping has shown that by winning the UDS with it. And then him and his team topped the next 3v3 with it. It's a good deck. Do I think it's better than 5? Honestly, hell no. It's a good deck and that's all. It has its problems. I think it's board is not that good. It's board is easily breakable. But it's still a good deck. And it was a good pick last format because Droll doesn't stop it. But uh, Droll doesn't do much to it. But Droll is not going to be around anymore. And people are more prepared for it. People have to read the Rocket cards. But now that everyone knows what it does, it, 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 it's going to be very easy to stop, in my opinion. And it still has no consistent out to Dark Ruler and stuff like that. Number four, Dino. Now, I respect Dino. I think it's a good deck. I think it can clear almost every deck, ex every board except my board, uh, when Dino goes second. 
But going first, a VFD pass is not enough. You're going to have to do more than that, bro. So Dino is going to be a solid number four. I'm not going to put it above four because I think the next few decks I'm going to say are, are going to be the top three decks undisputedly. And I think this is a format actually where I'm not the only person on the planet that thinks Pendulum is the best deck. I think this is a format where the world is unnoticed for it. That is not like the Electrum Iris format. But number three is going to be Salamangre. Now, I am a believer in Salamangre. I think any deck that is consistent one to two card engines with a bunch of staple hand trap and traps, I think any deck that could do that is going to be a good deck in the format. Well, case in point, I think Subterra, Zodiac, like they're all going to be pretty good as well. I think Orcus could be okay as well. But any deck that has a one to two card combos uh, all, will always be a good deck. And Salamangre is the best one to two card uh, engine in the game right now. Uh, better than Invoked, uh, obviously, but uh, so that's why I'm gonna put Salamanca number three. The fact that they can play 15 hand traps and still have a consistent engine, it's not a great deck, it's just a good deck. So, if you guys want, let's say, when regionals do come back eventually, and you guys want kind of like a guaranteed top at regional, Salamanca is just a guaranteed regional top, in my opinion, if you play perfectly because it's so good, it's very consistently good. It's not great, no, you cannot say Salamanca is great, it, it's honestly just good. It's a good deck. It's consistently good, but it's not consistently great. It's consistently average, consistently good. So it, for those people that know the deck inside and out, Salamangra, it's a great pick for you guys that will guaranteed, uh, as long as you don't misplay, it gets you a top, uh, a regional top, a YCS top. Also, if you play well, it should get you there. Number two, Shadal. So Shadal is a good deck as well. It's also consistently good, just like Salamangra. Shadal's not a great deck. Shadal's board is a joke. Winda, Kaliga, Pass. Shadal is just not a good deck. The only reason Shadal had play in the last format was because it was a great meta call because one window defeats Spiral. One window defeats Salamangre. One window defeats all these decks that apparently are the best decks. Bro, if one window stops your deck, your deck's absolutely trash. Okay, let me tell you that. Pendulums destroy window. Pendulum obliterate window. One window is a joke. Pendulum summon Jackal attack. All right, main phase two, money master everything. Good game. Put up five in the gates. Nice deck. Uh, if Shadal does not draw super poly, they auto lose against Pendulum. Shadal did not draw super poly against a try and spiral board, they lose. There's crazy hype around Shadal and for no reason at all. Shadal is a very overrated deck. I'm only putting it at number two because every other deck sucks. They're just, when I say sucks, every other deck is average. Pendulums, whether it's first or second, obliterate Shadal, and they're not even in the same category. Uh, Salamangri. <laughs> One window, staff Salamangri. So that's why I'm putting, I'm putting, I am putting Shadal over uh, Salamangri, Dino, and Rocket, simply because uh, one window stops all those bad decks. But against Pendulum, which is the best deck by far, one wind, you're, you're going to need five windows to stop us, baby. Number one, Pendulum. And this is legitimately true. If you don't think otherwise, you're, you're just shit with Pendulums. What Celine offers for Pendulum is insane. Pendulum's got the biggest buff on the whole battle list by getting Celine. You guys don't understand how good Celine is. I will preach this a million times. Celine is almost as good as Electrum, and I would prefer three Celine over Electrum any day of the week. If you could pick three Celine or one Electrum, three Celine, no questions asked. Celine is so broken, and I can only imagine what would happen if the two came together. Holy crap! If the two came together, if Konami bring, ever brings back Electrum. Is absolutely over. No deck stands a chance. But with just uh, everyone said Pendulum sucked. You guys are morons. It is by far the best deck. Whether you lose a die roll or not against every single deck I've just mentioned, you stand a chance. The Shadal board. Let's say Shadal does their best possible board. Mekaba and Winda go ahead. You obliterate that board. That board's garbage. That board's nothing. Activate Mighty Master, clear everything, battle phase, kill Winda, Jackal in the gate, good game, alright, Pendulum Summon 5, attack, game, alright, bye, good game. Salaman, great. Whether you win the die roll or lose the die roll, you're winning that matchup. Dino, whether you win the die roll you're, or lose the die roll, you're going first. They're not clearing your board. Rocket, what, if you win the die roll, you're not clearing your board. If you lose the die roll, Rocket's board is very overrated. It is three to four, it's four, three, four interruptions. Big damn deal. And you get rid of a card in my extra deck. I don't care. I have three Celine. Get rid of whatever the hell you want. Altergeist. Whether you win or lose a die roll, back of decks are free. Pendulum Summon, one Mighty Master, they're not clearing that. Mech and like, what's Altergeist do to, uh, to one, to one, uh, one Mighty Master? And nothing. And a Jackal, nothing. 
Uh, Mech Invoked, I don't need to describe how easy it is to beat that deck. Sub Terror, no explanation required. Mermail, if they go first uh, and loop your whole hand, that's an issue. That's why the way pendulums are, if you could play, you're good. Your whole side deck is Dark Ruler, Mystic Mind, stuff like that. But if they get rid of your whole hand, it's unfortunate. So against Mermail, you just put in four Mystic Minds, draw one, auto win. And the other decks, Zodiac, <laughs> Muskets, free. Everything else free. Pendulum is just the best deck. I'm not just saying that. So hope you guys like this video. That is my top 10 of the meta of the format. Pendulum best deck. So if you guys like the video, smash the subscribe button, smash the like button. If you want to support your boy, check out the beautiful Trip Gaming playmats at tripgaming.com and check out the Trip Gaming membership where I teach all you guys how to play Pendulums. Check it out in the description below. See you guys in the next video.